Belumi Nubi arrives Lagos after 68 days of driving from London. Popular content creator Belumi Nubi has completed a solo trip from London to Lagos. Belumi was received at the Nigeria Bene Republic border on behalf of Lagos State Government by Honorable Commissioner of Tourism, Arts and Culture, Mrs. Toke Benson Awinka, and the Special Advisor, Tourism, Arts and Culture, Idris Aregbe. Joining us on the studio, in the studio, <laughs> is the celebrator herself, Pelumi Newby. Welcome to the thank show. You. <laughs> thank you so much Welcome. for having me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You are pretty. <laughs> thank you, so are you. Mm. <laughs> And so all natural. All Thank natural. You. Hey, why can't <laughs> we, can we not rest <laughs> today? But <laughs> let's get to we're business. We're celebrating, we're celebrating yeah. everything. Let them get everything. Let them get So I know. I can see what I want to do. Why can't Well done. Wait. So, um, you know, to, reading about you, I realized that uh, by the age of 27, he had covered 77 countries. Yes. I Where know. did you get the love <laughs> to travel from? I think, you know, being relocating from Lagos and growing up in London. Um, when I moved to London, actually, I entered into primary six and just being different from the kids over there, I was actually bullied, you know, so I retracted to reading travel books in the mm. library mm. and that planted seeds of, oh, wow, there's a bigger world rather than just these two locations that was familiar mm. to me. Um, so it came from a pretty negative situation to it blowing up to something quite mm -hmm. positive. You made lemonade out of your lemon. Facts, <laughs> that is fact. Um, but yes, yeah, so it was just a kind of like, I just love new culture, trying new things, stepping out of my comfort zone. And I just realized the world is so big, so why not explore it mm -hmm. as much as I can if I have the means and the resource. It just, it just came out of like a place of love. So wow. the, these other countries, other 77 countries you mm -hmm, visited, mm -hmm. did you go by car? No, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I've done quite a few road trips too as well. So I've done solo drive across Namibia by myself, 4,000 kilometers, wow. sleeping, camping under the stars, wild camping, beautiful occasion. Um, I've also done traveling from London to Lake Como um, in Italy. Um, but the most time I just kind of flew. It was mostly Europe, Asia, you know, South, South America as well, backpacking, just really doing it on a budget. Like, I don't think traveling needs to break the bank. I feel use the resources you have, but like I said, it was important. Back, so it backpacked in South America. I did. Were you not scared? <laughs> well, yeah, that one actually was with a friend, so it was good to have a Company. companion for that one. Mm. Um, but solo solo travel is doable, as I've proven. You know, traveling yes. solo from London but, to Lagos. But what, what's the mindset like? Because mm -hmm. um, I've traveled solo, and I and I've traveled with a group, and yes. I just feel like group traveling with a group seem a lot more fun. Yes, there's a lot of responsibilities. You need to start arranging your exactly. schedule with every other person's exactly. own. How, what's the mindset when you are on your own for this number of days mm. of driving? Mm. I think it really teaches you how much you know yourself. A lot of mm. people don't enjoy their own company, mm. which is scary. You know, mm. why do we always need people for us to have fun mm. and enjoyment? Mm. So with solo drive, you get to know it's oneself. You get to know what is your limit. What is it like when I'm in a tight position and there's no one there to help? Like how much self-reliance and self-resilience do I have? So it really, if I've never solo traveled before, I always encourage people do it at least once you really get to know you get to know do i like this do i like that am i late do i like sleeping in or do i am i adventurous am i early bird money so there's just so many information not by car you, you can do by car you can do any means eh? you can do bike <laughs> so, you can bike you can walk can, you can, can do just, sorry nima can we just go back to the day you started your trip? yes mm. how did you feel were you uh -huh. any fear trepid, trepidation oh, any, yes. what how did you feel as you just started that solo trip, me, me and myself, and I, driving and to God. <laughs> the, I remember the night before a friend texted me, are you ready? And I'm like, ready? I'm not ready. So there was definitely fear, even though I was planning this trip for over a year, I still didn't feel prepared. I still felt I needed more equipment. I hadn't ordered enough things. I was, you know, trying to have backup plans, plan B, plan C. Um, but really, I remember the exact morning, I could barely sleep. It was almost like, you know, early having an exam, like, you know, that chair, mm, anxiety. anxiety and butterflies. 
of fly and excitement mm. all together. I remember mm. just driving away and my family home just getting smaller and smaller and they ran me around. I'm like, wow, like I'm really doing this. And I think this that is that moment where you transition from planning to action. That is where the magic happens because mm. it's like, wow, it's I'm action. really doing this. I'm really going for it. So yeah, they're just enjoying it. So, we must talk about the distance. So I love driving myself. Mm -hmm. I love drive. The drive to work is my ex escape mm -hmm. from all the trouble. <laughs> so I drive the distance to work. But yes. I can only imagine uh -huh. if they add to that distance, <laughs> something else will happen. Mm -hmm. Because I always look forward to, okay, I'll do the drive back. Yes, yes, so yes. how did you make this distance? I think, how many kilometers? More than 10,000 kilometers. So how did you make it? How, how did you or are you just wired to love driving? To leave family and not want to just run back within a day? Okay, so it means family connections. I think, you know, we live in a very family. I'm very close to my family. Even during this road trip, I touch base with them every single night. You know, I'll borrow Wi Fi if I have to just so that I can be like, please, I'm fine, I'm okay, everything is well. So me and family kept in touch, but traveling has been a big part of me. Like mm. you mentioned, I've traveled to over 80 plus country right now. So always been on the road. And if anything, every, each time I come back home, it means I'm more you know, grateful for that, mm. you know, because you, you know what they say, you, you know, this makes the heart grow fonder. Yes. So sometimes, you know, just having that distance means when I'm home, I'm like, I want to hug my mom tight. I want to hug my parents a bit closer. So definitely it's more of a positive than a negative, mm. but adventure also fills my soul. Mm. I get to feel, I get to try ah, new things. Travel. Exactly. Like, I like it. <laughs> uh, you know, because, sorry, I knew it's okay. you <laughs> know, because my, my daughter is th 35 and there was one she took up hang gliding and I know how I felt as a mother. You were scared. Are you all right? Yeah. <laughs> stupid. You stop that nonsense. There was one she went skiing. She, uh -huh. You know? Oh, I love her already. <laughs> <laughs> She's not my bestie. <laughs> how did your mother feel? I think, you know, the apple didn't fall far from the tree. Uh -huh. If anything, my okay. mom is more okay, adventurous. <laughs> <laughs> even if my mom is as adventurous as myself, like she inspired my travel. Like even when I were kids, you know, summer holidays we spent in America, like she really tried to expose us to the world right from a tender age. Mm. So I think that was also like a seed that was planted in terms of like the global citizen, you know, you can go anywhere, you know. I don't feel, oh, I'm black, I'm female, I cannot mm. go to a certain place. You there know, are no people, limitations. And there are no limitations. <clears throat> you know, sometimes I take the biblical time, you know, anywhere your footstep upon is yours. I take it sometimes be too literal because like, I'm, I'm fine. As long as the I'm universe. Legally, the universe is fine. So. <laughs> Let's review the Let me ask a question mm -hmm. before I come to you. I've been itching to ask this. So how do you prepare in terms of what are some of the things that you carry, you Absolutely. must have mm -hmm. with you in your car? And I know you went by your car, yes. right? Yes. So how did you, how long did it take you to gather those things? And yes. what are some of those vital things that you must you take on? On a road trip like this? On a road trip, yeah. Okay, so because it's a small mm -hmm. car and a small engine and everything like that, fuel tank was quite important. So having enough gas, so I had like a special and you don't want to use just any keg because it's, it's flammable stuff you're taking so make sure that it's safety extra tires i make sure i had i make sure i went to like a half day training session so you can fix your tires yourself so i can fix my tire myself wow. and i think every woman should be able to fix their tire themselves because you know we can do anything we want to do okay um so what else was, do you have um so i just had like health care like a medical kit just in case i needed like bandage and medication and things like that mm -hmm. i had like you know how often did you need them um, so it wasn't an accident. So I wasn't yeah, in an accident, it. yes. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of like every day, just like your everyday, your familiarity, you know, soap. I could buy these things in the, in the place, but there's something about having stuff that's familiar with you. Mm -hmm. I take like my blanket that smells like home, you know, mm -hmm. just little things when you're missing home or just having a bit of, you know, feeling homesick, you can mm -hmm. really, you know, gravitate towards these items. Um, I had an air tag so that my family could always track my location in case they couldn't, couldn't communicate mm -hmm. just for that safety purpose. Um, extra cash. You know, cards sometimes they work in certain places, making sure I had cash, disposable income. Um, different currencies? Different currencies, mm -hmm. you know, just make sure. Dollars is, is a good one to have because okay. most people it just... Covers most it covers most place places. So I had a couple <clears throat> of dollars on me. Um, trying to think what else I had. The card documentation, a valid passport, <laughs> passport mm -hmm. making sure it's valid more than six months. Some people don't check it and they go to try and okay. go through and they say, oh, no, it's... And they're like, no, it's not. But it has to have at least six months validity on it. Um, yeah, the card documents, things like that, and just my personal items that just made me feel at home as well. How many undies do you have? A lot, I actually. <laughs> I actually got enough. And I did, I did laundry too as well. I had like a scrubber bag, which is like a manual washing machine. Um, oh. So it just allows you to just kind of wash. When I was in the campsite, I could do my laundry and hang them to dry. So yeah, it was just like I was living everyday life, like hmm. in a very so interesting I, way. I wondered how 
each country was. Mm -hmm. so when you stepped into the first country, that when you left London and got into the first country. France was the first country, France, yes. How was it? And when you got into the first country in Africa, how was it? Yes. Before we we'll talk about your, the accident. No problem. So when, you, when, I, when I crossed in, so the, people look at the map and they always, I'd be baffled. Like, how is she able, able to, to do? Because there's these big oceans mm -hmm. between these two continents and stuff. So the, the first thing is I had to put the vehicle on a ferry. Mm -hmm. um, so you drive it in. The ferry takes you across the body of water, which was the English channels, getting into France. And um, that was an hour, 30 minutes. And then you drive out of the ferry. That's literally the only way. There's no other route. I take you take the Euro tunnel that takes you on the ground. But I wanted to use the ferry method. So that's the first way. So getting into France was quite, you know, I've been to France quite a few times. But I wanted to also visit landmark as well with my car her name is Lumi so I able to you know put her in front of the Eiffel Tower remember and just take a picture which is quite <laughs> iconic exactly wow. um, so that was the first time so, and then crossing into Morocco that happened from Spain so in Tarifa I took a ferry again an hour 30 minutes as well and just made my way across um, into into um, Morocco. Morocco yeah so that's how okay. I got from I Spain went into Morocco yes so you're you're driving right I am and all the countries you came through were they all right no they were left left hand driving left hand lane so totally opposite so um how was it were you did you have your car you you drove the same car right yeah, exactly the same car yes so but it's on a different side yes. so how did you navigate doing driving that particular did you get your game getting your permits mm -hmm. I, I drove for the first time on the other side <laughs> in mauritius yes. it is ridiculous like <laughs> So how your brain can't understand it. <laughs> yeah, you're so right that you spoke about the brain and having to like twitch. The thing about, like I said, I was able to do test runs of this trip. Again, this trip wasn't just spontaneous. I just didn't pack my bag. Mm -hmm. So like, for example, I, did, I drove, and I'm even actually, they, they drive the same as the UK and their right-hand drive as well. Um, but like in places, when I go on holidays, I do take rental cars. So you just practice. You're just literally telling yourself when you're driving on the right, you need to stay on left. Yeah. Like literally telling yourself, right, 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 until your brain kind of repurposes it. Or most importantly, I just kind of follow the locals in front of me, see how yeah, they how drive. They that, yeah. that just will re rise your brain. But you, you do make some mistakes here and there when you're trying to go into bed. You're like, oh, 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 quickly adjust. <laughs> but it's, it's perfectly normal and it's so, easy. My husband was on your page from the... The, the very beginning, the yes. And so he's, I just heard him scream, she's in an accident. Oh, no. When we, I followed your page to see the accident, so uh -huh. I saw the lady that you said was, you know, so helpful. Desiree. Mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's talk about how... That, that happened. happened and how she came. Oh, yeah, so um, the, before that, I was in a, in, at the border for two days in Liberia. Behold, because of the right-hand vehicle issue, we got it sorted thanks to the um, Nigerian embassy and, you know, just the consulate. They really stepped in and helped. And I was just driving. I was just, because of time, I just drove through Liberia. So my, pro my point was to try and get into Ivory Coast as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. I remember waking up 6 a.m. in the morning through the sunrise, and I was, like, at the border by 10. And with back and forth with the locals trying to collect money, bribery, saying I need to pay this and pay that for something that was meant to be a document completely free. Wow. I ended up staying till 7 p.m. So at 7 p.m., I looked around, I was like, I've not researched this place. Because it's a solo drive, everything is almost meticulously planned out in terms of like, what is the crime around this area? Is mm. this place safe? So I've, also, also, I've researched ahead of time in terms of this is where my stop should be. So I looked around, I was like, okay, let me just head towards where my stop should be. I was driving, pretty slow rate, you know, and there was a packed truck in front of me. It didn't have any hazard lights. Oh. No, even if they didn't have the hazard triangle, they tend to put like branches of, mm -hmm. of leaves yes. just to warn you that this oh. is something, nothing. So it was just a packed truck I was driving one minute the next minute I saw airbags it happened so quickly oh, and it was just a collision to it you know at one point the, the press the police um, in Ivory Coast were like do you want to press charges at the truck driver because it's full liability and mm -hmm. um, thank God I wasn't speeding you know my engine wasn't damaged but it was more of the bodywork of the car thank God I wasn't hurt I did have to go into hospital just to check you know make sure there was nothing internal because there was nothing external um, but then to mention the ladies talking about my name is Daisy Ray she's from the community you know and um, talk about the accident when they say it was press charges was like look this is a ripple effect number one I shouldn't have been on the road in the first place, which is something I'm very keen and passionate about in terms of policy and border controls. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, the lady, so when the collision happened, the my own just kept on blaring. Like, I think it was a malfunction, but it was a mm -hmm. good thing mm -hmm. because everybody came with flashlight. They were like, what is going on? Like, it wasn't just a honk. It was more like, uh, and it was ongoing for five, 10 minutes. So they came and they just kind of tried to rescue me, open the door, but my, my um, driver door was jammed. So I had to crawl through and I just had to like do like a quick, 
medical check. I have like a little medical background. So just make sure that, okay, I'm breathing. I don't feel dizzy. Just trying to stay alert and awake. Um, I remember calling my mom, just like, stay calm. <laughs> um, I don't think that's the news she wanted to hear, but she was as calm, you know, obviously internally probably panicking, but <laughs> trying to get as many, you know, abroad kind of. But thank God I knew someone that was local. But this lady, her name is Desiree. God bless her. I call her my personal angel because she did not, we did not speak any words to each other. She spoke French. I spoke English. And... She just kept looking at me with so much empathy, so much, you know, you know, I so just feel sorry for you. Like there was just that instant connection between us. And as the ambulance was about to take me away to the hospital, she just said something to them in French. I think she was asking, like, can she go in the ambulance with me? And they looked at her and looked like, do you know her? She was like, no, but I can't let her go alone. Wow. And that's how she got into That's she, really your angel. She's, honestly, she stayed in the hospital with me for two days. Wow. She bathed for me at one point. Like, it was just so, like, almost so ties and straight away. Um, so I'm so grateful for her. Like, the so kindness of stranger has been amazing. How did your car get repaired? So we had to tow the car from the point of accident. So the police did their own report and everything and we told it to Abidjan. Again, another amazing soul helped me there, Yasmin of Afro Foodie, and she was able to host me and all of that. But the mechanic, um, we contacted the embassy of Nigeria again. The embassy have stepped in so many times. Nigerian embassy, I really give them applause because they've stepped in this so is well done. I've said it over yeah, and over again. Yeah, honestly, like, do the bashing, but honestly, when it came, when push came to shove, they really did step yeah, in. They... Yeah, honestly, I do give them the credit for that. So they connected me to a mechanic and they were able to fix um, Lumi back again. Well, Lumi, oh. I seriously have to employ you to give the route again. Okay. I see uh, comments on our YouTube pages doubting how it's possible for you to solo drive. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> no problem. Say, Tell us the route. It's impossible. It's impossible. How no did worries. you do ferry? It's impossible. Okay. Someone else said, ah, after Algeria, you went into the dark desert of no, Mali. No, we didn't go to Algeria. I didn't go to Algeria. So, so some people know that know that <coughs> route where it's just like a straight line going through. I wanted to take more to the west, west coast of Africa. I did post all this content on my social media platform, so do check it out. Belumi on Instagram. Showing online. Exactly. So you can literally see the route I took. There's a bit of modification because of the issue happening in uh, Mali. Mm -hmm. I kind of skipped it and Burkina Faso. Mm -hmm. So I just literally just talked to the coast side. So it's, the trip started off in. Um, the United and UK crossed into France, um, and then we went to Spain, and then crossed into Morocco, then Mauritania, and then from Mauritania we went into Senegal. From the Senegal we went into the Gambia, from Gambia, Gambia, Guinea Bissau, Guinea, Sierra Leone, Liberia, then Ivory Coast, then Togo, Benin, so, um, Lagos. So you didn't Ghana. go through the Sahara Desert. I did go to Sahara. So Morocco is no is is, this, is debatable. You know, some mm. people call it West Sahara, yeah. some people call it Morocco. So I tried not to in the middle of that so it's just kind of like yeah when you were stamping in and out you're going through the morocco border so mm -hmm. yeah there was Sahara desert some, driving some of these countries really uh scary how did you do your night time did mm -hmm. you get comfortable hotels to sleep in or you slept in or your car out. where did you where was secure enough for you to pack your car and sleep so there were three options i did convert my car to be fully kitted in terms of having a bed in there just because there was so many times. Car. That small car, yes, yeah, it has a whole bed. Look how we get wow. it. It has literally it has like a whole kitchen kitchen feature. I have a stove wow. in there, can whip up a meal. There's like you know taps to wash because I'm going to Sahara Desert to make sure I had clean water at every point in time. So there was just all of that modification that happened to it. So I did three options: either wild camp, you know, just making sure that that was free, 99 a quiet street you know i did that mostly in europe but sometimes in africa it was emergency i kind of stayed in different places the second option was um you know staying in campsites which i really liked because it was like when you wake up you have the facility of showers and stuff with wild camp you have to wake up and then go find a shower which means going to a hotel Fetch and say water. exactly please can i use your can i use your um, bedroom facilities or something like that and pay or tip them um and then finally just staying in a hotel or having a host sometimes i had a host in the places i was going to mm. you know sierra leone i had a host there in Ivory because i had a host there mm. they just welcomed me into their home and allowed me to mm. stay with them Okay, so mm. what would you say? Um, okay, go ahead. I'm, I'm just looking at the map of Africa. You went through Morocco, Western mm -hmm. Sahara, yes. Mauritania. Line. Yes, so I literally yeah. took the West Coast. Yes. Okay. Exactly. I, so I stuck to the West of Africa. Gambia, yes. Guinea Bissau. Exactly. Guinea, Sierra mm -hmm. Leone, yes. Liberia, yes. 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 Ivory Coast, yes. Ghana, Togo. Like it's on the map. <laughs> yeah, so, I, yeah. I, I, I feel so, like. You, you, you wanted to, you've achieved something. Absolutely. Yes, you got. Nigerians distracted from all our stress mm. and um, 
you got the people talking about this young lady who dared mm -hmm. and how does that make you feel and um, do you feel under pressure to do something big again right now like <laughs> what's, what's next for you That's That's the the like the... what's next um, so to say to, to address the first thing you said in terms of like you know the whole purpose of driving was just a model you know I wanted people to be able to extrapolate my experiences and using their own daily life mm -hmm. so it was the kind of like I love to travel and I'll use this as an example I remember when I posted I'm doing this London to Lagos I did like a whole preview of the of what's going to happen I feel like it's not going to happen it's impossible that's the word they use and I'm like yeah. watch me <laughs> and really the idea is that if you ever thought London to Lagos was impossible by solo female black traveler hopefully when you see that cross the finish line and I'm here in Lagos, Nigeria, you look at your life and you look at what else in my life am I considering I impossible mm. and what can I go after and actually mm. achieve. Mm. So that's really the message behind this travel. Like, you know, for the youth, for the she girl, for all of that, can we push outside away from the constraint, away from the box that society keeps trying to keep, keep us in? Mm. Um, so yeah, that's the thing. I'll always continue to travel for your next question, what <laughs> next? Um, but if anything, you know, just the community that we've been able to grow, you know, on Instagram I started with 12,000 followers were hitting almost 200 and something oh, and TikTok amazing. was 200 we're about to hit almost a hundred thousand so how old are you i'm 29 yes oh, <laughs> so be young to be young and free yes. <laughs> okay, I can't imagine yeah. no 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 but you can't that level you can do anything you can do anything you've been traveling and you've been meeting people yes what would you say is that thing that connects us as humans hmm. aside from the religious the ethnicity, the tribe, the race, and what what's that thing you noticed in your interactions with people all over the world mm. that unites us, unites our humanity? We want to love and we want to be loved. Mm. I think if anything, humans are more good than evil. You know, I might be naive, you know, but yeah. I really believe that people have met strangers of, like I just talk about the kindness of strangers, like, mm really honestly like you know we are fed a lot of things sometimes and it marks the joy of humanity of people you know yeah. gathering together and helping someone in crisis and i saw that over and over again mm -hmm. during my trip like each time i posted something going wrong on social media or something like i go rally oh i know this person i know that person i want to help i want to help i want and that i feel is the natural kind of like humanity I saw across board, mm -hmm. you know, and it just wasn't a drive. You know, if I wanted to drive this route, it could happen in two weeks. This mm -hmm. happened over like two months because I wanted to stop in each place, take it all in, showcase it, you know, to the world. I remember showing some places, you know, Yamasukro, the biggest church, the um, Lady of Peace, Balisiko, and people was like, that's in Africa? I was like, yes, yeah, this is the biggest church in the world. Like, wow. It is in Africa, it's here in Ivory Coast. So really showing those sites to people and, you know, drawing tourism here. And like, I'm excited to do that here in Lagos, Nigeria as well, that people will be able to say, I'm going on a holiday here, I'm going on a tour here. Um, so that's another uh, goal of so, mine. But you, you haven't shown Lagos well. That is the plan, don't worry. I'm just trying to settle into home. But there'll be plenty. Yes, so yes, yes. yes. The I would love to. I would love to. Let's talk about the reception you had from the Lagos State Government. Oh my goodness. We saw the pictures on social media. Did not fail us. No, ah, no she no, did no. not. Okay. She did not. Oh, she did not. As well. So what yes. was it like to them? Honestly, I knew, I've been, you know, welcome in so many different places. Like I said, a lot of people connected to this journey. And it was just a case of, you know, um, really tuning into other people and you know it, it happened in ivory coast where people like 24 hours they gathered together celebrated me same thing happened in ghana even i think benin had like literally 12 hours notice like i'm coming and they all like gathered together and celebrated me so nigeria knew there was going to be something that i did not know it would be that big <laughs> I, I, I was i was flabbergasted i never expected it as they say you know and you know i knew unilag was doing something shout out to them shout out to the school management shout out to the vc like they really uphold that you know passing on the touch to the next generation, mm -hmm. showing the youth what is possible, youth empowerment is something I'm very passionate about as well. So really just having that homecoming there. But it's starting from Seme border, <laughs> the easiest border I've crossed <laughs> throughout my whole trip. You know, they did the thumbprint, they stamped me in. 
but the celebration, the home, the tears Aww. flowed without, you know, it was almost spontaneous. We've seen my parents and just the feeling the love. Oh, oh, the oh my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad, like, hard guy, hard guy. That's your mom right there. Yeah, that's my mom right there dancing next to me. Yeah, so that's my mom. So it was just a day full of full celebration, seeing the true Nigerian spirit, which we know, we know the curry last, like, okay. so we really, really um, celebrated right there at the border and just having the escort, you know, stopping at different places, Mao too, meeting mm -hmm. the locals, mm -hmm. you know, going live and just having people engage That's with it. It was quite yes, nice. Uh, it was quite nice. Question. This yes, question please. is very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to your heart. So when you finally <coughs> got a bed, Oh. Hey, it's a whole video. Oh my gosh! Sleep. It's a whole video of me when I finished this event. I literally leaped into bed like it was like <laughs> a leap of joy. Uh, funny enough, the first night I actually was. I think the adrenaline was just surging so through my. Yeah. They were everybody was messing. Go and sleep. Go and sleep. I was like, I'm still wide awake. Like my body was tired, but my mind was just was so. Working. I couldn't process everything. It was just so exciting to have such a homecoming, and it 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 felt amazing. It really did. Mm. Hmm. So it took you like 24 hours to finally sleep. So. Yes, yes, yes. I think I had a good night's sleep I saw yesterday. I reception with the governor as well. Yes, that was amazing. Just and we, about the awards, the... Um, um, Having your car. own number, um, number <laughs> plates, you know, Nubi <laughs> Niger. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. Look, I, I went there to just kind of honor His Excellency for, you know, the great thing that he, he does, you know, you know, the open up Tommy Light Bridge, you know, like just really all of the development that's happening in Lagos State itself and the plans for the future um, in terms of tourism. So to be able to be honored in such away melted my heart i wasn't expecting anything and to be given like you know the title of ambassador mm. of um, tourism here in lagos state to be given a car to be given a house to be you know wow. my bills of the time i was that's, that's, that's <laughs> that's like honestly me. i wasn't expecting you are 29 it. i am indeed do you hey. have a boyfriend hey. 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 do you have a boyfriend <laughs> Sip, sip my tea. Like <laughs> no, 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 no. She has to tell us. Do you have a relationship? No, I don't. Because somebody is watching you right I'm, now. And saying, this. okay, I want to be. Please, please, comments please. Are please. Can I After finish this, my question? So, so somebody question. out there may, you know, mm -hmm. want to do this, but then yeah. they have a partner, maybe Absolutely. a boyfriend, right? mm -hmm. a husband, yes. or somebody mm -hmm. in the corner who mm -hmm. says, "I won't let you do this," and they feel, okay, it's since I already have a partner. There's no need to do this. That's why I wanted to know if you had someone who you saw a, you through, supported you, yeah. or if you're in a relationship. And why are you not in a relationship? You're 29. Oh, you're why? beautiful. <laughs> Sound like my mother. <laughs> <laughs> and she's a Why, 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 why? What, she, 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 what's going on? Honestly, to do Gilly now. I, she's, I she's, she's excited for that. Um, I just I haven't just found the right person. You know, it's, I think when it's time, it's time. Um, there's no there's no rush there's on my rush. side so mm -hmm. yeah when it will be it will be so mm -hmm. yeah are you the only child i'm not i have two older brothers okay no well, you're the only girl yes last i'm one. the only girl the last one <laughs> last i'm the baby one. of the house can i get this message <laughs> from mama tmo she says good morning my dear ladies of your view mm -hmm. everyone Bellu me. <laughs> I just had to come online to say how proud I am of you. Girl, you are an absolute delight. Thank Aww. you. Oh, the plenty. Let's take more. Thank you so much. Boya Miss Steven says, Belumi, you are such an amazing lady. I oh love my, my heart for you. Mm. At some point, I was following you to know how you were faring on the journey. Gania says, her smile is really beautiful. Oh. I'm proud of her because I can't do it. black beauty. She is beautiful. <laughs> Thank yes. you so much. Thank you. Um, Elizabeth Ayetan says, well done, Belumi. She has such a beautiful beautiful smile um we have another one here gania you took the gania right people are just complimenting yeah they're complimenting um, what you've somebody, done Thank somebody's you. upset he said something huge like this happened <laughs> and we went to talk about obasek <laughs> <laughs> we needed to start the show now <laughs> Bring it, well, me. so well, me, um, we, are, we are wrapping up the yeah. conversation i would like to know um where you see yourself Mm -hmm. in the next few years. Absolutely. Uh, relationship inclusive. Please add okay. that for me. No worries. For my well, peace yeah. of mind. I cannot, I have no control of that. Yes, <laughs> exactly. yes. but, but, do but I'm you, open to it. You're so, open to yeah, it. You're absolutely. open to love. Every time. Okay, Every so time. where do you see yourself in your career and what next you want to do? I think, you know, I'm very, I'm, I'm one to wear like horse blinders in my goals and my targets. I'm just kind of like one goal at a time and mm -hmm. trusting God, if anything, you know, we make plans and God has bigger and better for us at mm -hmm. every point in time. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I think the immediate plan is what I love, which is, you know, 
women can drive. Mm. Um, there's a stereotype that women cannot drive. Like, if you see someone make a mistake on the road you or change lanes. Now, woman! Now, woman did that mm. So, not just the emotion, not just the physical driving, but knowing that women can drive. Women can drive businesses, mm. women can drive homes, women can drive excellence, women can drive innovations. So just empowering the woman to be able to go on and to showcase that beautiful message that we are already doing it and the society just needs to shift perspective and actually be part of the agenda. So now that the government has given you a car, are you driving that car back to London? No, she's like, <laughs> 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 what is it called? Lumi. Lumi. So, what you do to no, no, Lumi. Uh, How is so Lumi going to get back to London? Yeah. So Lumi is actually going to be donated to the Museum of Lagos, so she's going to be ah. right here. So hopefully she'll be, you know, be able to inspire more people to seek adventures. My journey will be documented with her at the museum. So do check That's out. I want to see something on Netflix. <laughs> I can just see how that, like, I would, I would have loved the Netflix. Uh, Shout out to Netflix if you're listening. Netflix, yeah. please. Jump on this. this. Yeah. You know, but. You know, and um, this one will not be snake in the monkey. <laughs> 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 I think yeah, this week in the monkey shadow. But I wanted to ask about your next location because you're a travel blogger. You're someone exactly. that travels. So, mm -hmm. like, when, where, where is this? What's your? What's the, what's the country that you're most excited about? Maybe what you visited before, and mm -hmm. where next would you like, to, like to go? Visit with excitement, and like you're looking forward to. No, I. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Honestly, being here right now, like you said, I haven't had the chance to actually explore Lagos mm. and, 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 and Nigeria as a whole. So that's definitely something I want to spend some time doing and just kind of like showcase our culture, our food, the people, immerse myself more in it. So that's definitely something I'm really excited for. And honestly, the future is, is bright. I cannot it wait to just keep bright. exploring. So we, 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 we'll host you at Shrine. Yes. Then you go to Ikobu Find some other places. Yes. There are many yes. interesting yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I'm stalking your Instagram. Don't worry, now, you get, you're so. gonna get all of it, all of the teas. Okay. I'm going to follow, start following you on Instagram. It's I'm not a Instagram. It's okay. On Facebook, we are Twitter. I'm just we have a person. There. <laughs> You're just a person. On <laughs> you post to us and run away, and, run away. <laughs> and we don't see you. So, um, what I've learned from you today, Belumi, mm. is the fact that whatever the mind sees or perceives, mm. the body, the heart the spirit mm. can achieve. I believe. And it's not just something you jump into. It mm. takes time mm -hmm. and planning, mm -hmm. planning. Mm -hmm. and perseverance, mm -hmm. you know, and the fact that challenges will come up. You never mm -hmm. foresaw the accident that That's happened okay. along the way, but okay. thank God it went well yes. you know, for your good at the yes. end of the day. Yes. I'd like you to give one last word to a young girl out there who mm. all her life she may have been told that there's nothing good coming out of you. What's mm. that word? you would tell her today to lift her spirit that she's able to achieve anything? So I was told that exact statement, you know. Wow. Um, I suffer from a learning difficulty called dyslexia. So reading and writing was quite difficult in school. Um, I did then go on to finish with a first class in university and go on to study a PhD. So with the dyslexia? <laughs> with dyslexia. Wow. So that's something I'm definitely wanting to push as well in terms of, you know, blend difficulties and how that is diagnosed even here in Nigeria because you know that wasn't picked up in my in my youth in my childhood here um but to the to the girl listening to me right now understand that people's opinions of you are not facts mm. they are just opinions mm. you know the magic is in the doing you really need to just step into the unknown magic. you know feel the fear but do it anyways. Mm. You know, that has really been my motto and my motivation. And if you believe in God, hold on to him because he really is everything. The magic Ooh, is in so the doing. Yeah. We have this last call before we run. Mm -hmm. Just squeeze in this call before we run. Is the call ready? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello, follow me. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so so happy. I'm so glad I watched your Insta live. I you think that your dad, Professor Nobi, taught me in Unilag. Wow. Um, 2000 and all stars, man. And he was always talking about you. His daughter, this, his daughter. You know, as far as students, they're like, ah, ah what is this? No, he's a but proud now, father. He's amazing. Seeing it now, like, what you now understand. So <laughs> you now understand. Like, we're so happy. We're proud of you. Indeed, you are the women. You are the kind of woman we love. Mm. <laughs> Thank you for inspiring us. Thank you so much.